Hi everybody, I'm mixed media artist Micah Gogan from Middle Georgia, and I'm here today to share some exciting mixed media processes using the gel press gel plate. Uh, would you like your mixed media projects to go from ow to wow? All of these projects back here were done in a multi-layered process featuring the gel press gel plate. I'm gonna show you a little simple abstract mini landscape today that'll hopefully get you excited and enthusiastic about your mixed media projects. All right, so um, today I'm gonna to be doing a mono printing uh, painting and you can see the iridescent qualities that are on this. I used a variety of products, um, but I'm actually gonna use a printmaking process and then embellish on top. But this is the finished piece, just a very soft uh, abstracted landscape. And I'm going to set that aside. And today, as far as products go, I'm going to be working surface on an ampersand gesso board. Uh, this is a superior stable substrate. Um, everything is treated with Archiva Seal, which is exclusive to ampersand. And it is their uh, archival um, and acid-free coating that will ensure that your artwork stays uh, presentable for years to come. This is a six by six um, panel that I'm going to be working on and um, I'm gonna be using it as a print plate. For the printing, I'm gonna be using gel press gel plate, also six by six, so that way um, I can pair them and couple them up uh, beautifully. And as far as the uh, paints, I'm gonna be using golden open acrylics. Uh, golden open acrylics have a slow drying agent which allows them to stay workable for hours um, and you can achieve uh, different qualities and effects that were once only able to be accomplished by using oil paints. Um, today I have several colors I'm going to review with you. I've got everything set up here on a little glass palette including my gel plate and I'm going to be using for my mark making tools just two silver brush uh, this is from the Bristlon series. I've got a number six flat and a number two uh, bright. And I'm gonna be using those to apply my paint. And then I'm gonna come back to embellish with a little bit of iridescent bronze and a little bit of CT interference green and blue. So I'll revisit these uh, products shortly. I've got my palette set up and colors that I'm gonna use here are gonna include um, the Napthal red light, the benzomidazolone yellow, I'm gonna use the manganese blue and the bone black. Notice that I don't have a white involved uh, because I'm gonna let the white of the board actually be the white in the painting. So I'm gonna take my six by six gel plate and because it is a transparent gel plate, I've got an image here. This is a copyright free photo from an old trip and I just formatted it to be a square so that I'll have that orientation. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to just place the gel plate right on top of the image. So it almost acts like a transparency. And that's what I mean about these being um, offered at a variety of levels and you can just keep it as bite sized as you need it to be. Now, of course, if you would like to implement your own drawing skills, you could freehand it, you could make up your own image, et cetera. But having this transparent option allows this to be a perfect exercise for beginners um, or people that just want a simple meditative exercise. I'm gonna wet my brush, uh, just the bristles are wet, but I'm gonna be sure and tap it on a paper towel to uh, get rid of the excess moisture. And I'm gonna start with my light colors. I'm always gonna paint light to dark, starting off with a little bit of the Menza Medazolone Yellow. And I'm just gonna mix here to get a, a nice uh, bright green, but I want a higher proportion of my yellows. I'm gonna uh, gently apply enough, a generous amount of paint to both sides of the brush. And I'm not over mixing, I'm trying to just let the colors be playful. And I'm just gonna come in and I'm gonna create this pat, 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 pat. Sound effects help very much so because if you tend to overwork things like I do, then the sound effects kind of remind me, hey, I'm just trying to get that energy going. And I'm just gonna pat, pat, pat all the way around, creating my brighter surfaces on the plate. And I'm just tracing along, very easy going. We've got enough serious stuff going on. This is playtime and I'm enjoying just letting loose. I'm gonna slowly increase my proportion of the manganese blue so that I get a darker green. And I'm just gonna embellish and build right on top of that. You see how I'm just kind of tickling along. I'm purposely not over mixing my colors so that I can just get, you know, just some playful patches here. Beautiful. I love the intensity of the pigment in all of the golden products, but I love the workability of the open acrylics. You know, 
just to be able to have that open time, meaning the amount of time that the product actually stays wet um, on the surface. So I'm just getting darker as I move down here to the bottom. And I'm not sure if you saw it in the image, but there was a beautiful little hint of red. You may not even see red in this painting, but I'm just gonna just say hello to my friend red. Hello, just gonna put a little bit there, just enough to create some interest. And then I'm gonna take a little bit more of the muted blue and come in and start working into my darker areas. You see I'm creating that darker horizon line. Boop, 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 boop. And I just love the freedom of just being able to just kind of follow along and enjoy my time. And a little bit of light there. I'm gonna rinse out my brush. And for the first time, I'm gonna visit my black and I want to just create some of the darker areas here just by putting in some of those shadow shapes. I'm just tickling in some of my bone black. Tickle in, just to give a little bit of depth. I love having a wide value range in my painting so that I can, you know, have both light and dark spots. I tend to be a little bit of a value junkie, so I like heavy value. Gives it that chiaroscuro or that dramatic pop of shadow and light. Loving it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix just a tiny bit of this um, bone black with a little bit of this manganese blue and get kind of a light Payne's gray or Prussian color. And what I'm going to do, even though the sky is a little bit um, brighter, I'm going to just reserve some of this dark gray from the mountains that I can separate. So this is the mixture of both the black and the blue. I don't want the blue to be in your face because I'm trying to create this atmospheric perspective. And that just means that the colors get more dull as they diminish away from you. Very nice, get some of that playful energy. I'm gonna get a little bit more blue, but still have a little bit of black tied in there. And I'm gonna pat the dark parts of my cloud. Pat, 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 pat. Boop, 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 boop. Boop, 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 boop. Feel like the Charlie Brown adult. Womp, 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 womp. <laughs> so I got my little brush strokes going on. And now I'm going to just put some um, light streaks of Payne's Gray here in the surface. Now the sky would be white, and because the panel's white, I don't want um, it to be straight white. So I'm just taking some of this residue from the bone black and I'm just mixing it in on the plate. It's very thin, uh, it's very transparent. It's gonna allow for some really beautiful uh, beading and bubbling to happen on the plate so that I have a stained antiqued surface, but not overly worked. And I'm just being just real playful. And I'm remembering that this is just a layer. You know, there's no stress or tension added to this process because I'm gonna further embellish it throughout the process. But this just allows me to play and enjoy the capabilities of the gel plate and all the abilities that it can do as far as the printmaking and the layering go. So much fun. Okay. And then once I feel like I have a good coverage, I'm just gonna pop in some areas here, make sure that I've got most of my little areas covered. And then what I'm gonna do to print is I wanna create a registration. Now, what is a registration? Registration means that I want the plate to line up with the substrate as evenly as possible. So I'm just gonna use my thumbs to guide over this image as evenly as possible. And then once I feel like I've got a pretty good lineup, I'm just going to deposit the image on top. And I could just press this way, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift the tape, got just some painter's tape down for the surface, and I'm going to flip the plate over like so. And I'm just going to get this squishy goodness all over, and I'm just like very gratifyingly pressing the plate down to make sure that there's even distribution. Now, if I had done it the other way, because of ampersand's superior stability, um, the plate could be a little bit um, too firm and it wouldn't get a good press to the plate. But with this way, I can just squish that plate right into the board. And then another advantage to doing it this way is when I peel back the image, 
Oh snap, I get a little sneak preview of what it's gonna look like. And so if there's any air bubbles in here, I can just squish those out, making sure that the plate has made contact fully with the plate. And I just get this really exciting mark making that I would not be able to achieve any other way than this fun printmaking process. And then when you feel pretty satisfied with it, we just peel back the plate and we have all that dimensional goodness waiting on us. And so I'm just gonna set this one aside and I'm gonna bring out our friend that we have that was pre-dried that just has a little bit of a, a watercolor effect to it. And then I'm gonna flip my palette around here because what I would like to do now is I'd like to introduce a little bit of the iridescent bronze. And I'm just gonna put some of that down. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of my CT interference green blue. Now, the bronze have metallic uh, pigments in, in them. They have actually um, some micaceous um, particles in them and then the CT interference actually have titanium white flakes that were painted with both green and blue. So depending on the way that you shift the colors then you've got um, a different prism of color available to you. So I'm choosing to use the green blue just because obviously there's so much green blue in this uh, image and I'm shifting to my smaller number two bright brush at this point. Again I'm wetting the bristles. I always want to start with wet bristles but I tap it on the paper towel to make sure that they're damp but not overly saturated. Now I'm just going to take my bronze. I just want enough just to kind of uh, give a little bit of sparkle. I want to show you this uh, finished one again and if you could just see the places where I just kind of added that, that curly iridescence. Um, I just want to do some embellishment techniques. So I'm taking the small number two brush and I'm just tickling and skipping some spaces. I call it breaking the caterpillar. I don't like these long continuous lines and I don't want to cover up the beauty of the mark making that happened from the gel plate. So I'm just putting these little uh, exciting energetic lines with the bronze just enough to kind of you know just say something mark making just so I can introduce a little bit of that color. And I'm just tickling the bronze and tickling I just mean that I'm just very rapidly uh, distributing some of the pigment down on the actual surface. The ampersand gesso board's a perfect surface for mixed media and layering. So uh, because of the thin application that happened with the gel plate initially, there's plenty of room to grow and build texture on this. I'm then gonna come back and I'm gonna take some of the CT interference, the green blue, and I'm just gonna put some of the same patches right on top of the color. I can even dip back into my original colors by pulling just a little bit of the blue, uh, the manganese blue, and mixing it in with the color. So not only do I get some vibrant blue patches, but they've got a little bit of that iridescent sheen from the CT color. Look at that. All these wonderful translucent layers. It's just a very happy, bright, vibrant painting. Didn't have to think too much. Didn't take a lot of time out of my day. Just something I could just kind of step away from and just totally make my own. And I'm gonna just kind of overlap the clouds. So in this particular print, because everyone's original and different, just like you, this one did not print any really high noticeable clouds. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create them by doing some mark making. And I'm just putting a little bit of the CT interference and I'm just billowing out some cloud textures so that I have a little bit of that. You can see it, it might look like wet uh, paint on the surface, but that will actually be what stays reflective in the CT versions. So that'll be exciting. And then the final thing that I'm going to do to embellish, I'm going to use this Faber-Castell uh, pit pen. This is a black series. It's just a finer tip. They come in a variety of tips. And I'm just going to put a little bit of really energetic mark making here. Just look at the embellishment here. It's just kind of some squiggly lines, almost like a little daydream. Again, breaking the caterpillar so I don't have one continuous line here. And so I'm gonna start with some of the areas. Of course, this is still a little damp, but I'm gonna start with some of the areas that are a little dry and I'm gonna squiggle around and just, you know, lifting the pen and also setting the pen down. If I don't have any clear boundaries, I can set those at this time. Uh, I'm going to come back into the gold, and because it was such a thin layer, excuse me, the bronze, then I can just create this squiggledy mark making all around and just create my own little energy of these tufts of grass. I can just feel them blowing in that Tuscan breeze and just get this energy and this mark making that's happening. Isn't that playful? Just a lot of fun. And you've got the, the air bubbles that happen that created these little pockets. 
until... Okay, so then we're just going on with the energy of the clouds, just creating that playful squiggly sgraffito all up in the clouds until we have our finished, uh, just really whimsical, playful. It's got all the elements. It's got printmaking. It's got fun access. It's got mark making. It's got metallics. I mean, what's not to love? You can put this in a floater frame to uh, best... Uh, distribute it. Uh, Ampersand makes original floater frames. You can put it on an actual cradle panel which is also available to you so it's ready to hang as soon as you're done. Now if this was Ampersand clay board you could also take some scratching and mark making and you could actually do some relief carving to get even another layer of depth. Thank you and you can find more of my artwork at uh, www.micagogan.com.